Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all, hearts to open all desires in our own. From you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and Moses and his works to the children of Israel. 
The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger and of great kindness. And not come to something that can be touched. A blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it will be stoned to death. Uh, in, in deep, so, indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with, with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gatherings, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the, right, of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator, of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a bitter word than the blood of, of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the ones who born from God, from heaven. At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more, I will make not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, once more, indicates the renewal, removal of what is shaken, that is created, things that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks to which, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. And indeed, our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, Immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. The rules. <laughs> the rules. I mean, I believe in rules. We have an ordered society, and I set out to obey those rules, but it's also a good reminder that sometimes they don't command the ultimate allegiance. And just as you may recall from a couple of weeks ago, when Jesus, in effect, asserted the priority of faith, even over family times. He said, I come and my presence is going to set father against son and son against father and daughter and 
daughter-in-law and mother-in-law and all these family people. But the real message of that is that the ultimate allegiance is to God, to God's invitation to us, to God's call to us. And even if that stirs up a family strife, our first allegiance is to God before before nation, before party, before family loyalty, before cultural custom, all those things, God's demand comes first. And now we have to be careful with that. We use discernment with that, but still, first things first. So in today's gospel, what's going on here is in the Judaism of the first century in which Jesus lives in his world. And the, the rule is you don't do work on the Sabbath. And this is the Sabbath day. So a lady who's been pre, uh, plagued for 18 years by this condition that doesn't even let her stand up straight has appeared to Jesus and he heals her on the Sabbath. And that's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful healing, but he broke the rule. So the custodian of the rules, the rabbi, gets up and says, what are you doing here? Don't do this. If you want to be healed, come on any of the other six days. Well, guess what? If Jesus isn't there, I'm saying that may not happen on any of the other six days, but that's, that's another story. But the point being that Jesus isn't bound by that law to heal the woman. And healing the woman at that moment gets the priority. That comes first. As we were saying, it's, it's in the adult classes, we were talking about these themes. The, the purpose of these laws ultimately is for the faithful completion of humanity, for the faithful completion of life. It's not an end in itself. It serves a purpose. And so the purpose to be served in this case is not accomplished by following the little rule, but by going beyond it to something even more. And just as we, we'd said in terms of like maybe to help a patient to get better is necessary to, to bend a little rule or maybe to, to rescue uh, a, a soldier who's been left behind is necessary to bend a little rule or just bad, bad teaching sometimes needs to be contradicted that goes against the grain. But the point is that Jesus doesn't come into the world for the sake of the rules that the rules are for the sake of knowing God better and having a more collective life, a life that we can share. So sometimes the one has to give relative to the other. And we see that happening again and again. Um, I don't know, I can think of the civil rights movement in the United States. Sometimes rules were bent, uh, whatever. Martin Luther King Jr. found himself in jail in Birmingham for parading without a permit. Well, they wouldn't give him a permit. So if he was going to have a demonstration in favor of breaking down these, these barriers based on racial discrimination, it was necessary to break that law. So he was out there parading without a permit. Okay. But he was parading without a permit for a much more important reason. We were saying today the, uh, the Underground Railroad that came through this part of the world uh, on the way to Cincinnati, setting people free. Uh, they were breaking a rule to do that. The rule in effect at that time was you didn't set slaves free. You, they were property. You were taking away someone's property. But a deeper understanding of what was going on there was this is a human being and we're setting them free. And to do that, they broke a rule. Uh, we said in Nazi Germany, you could see people who were Jews being rounded up, put into concentration camps, put to death. Uh, there were those who hid them, hid them to keep them safe, keep them from being arrested, keep them from being taken away. Uh, they were breaking rules when they did that. But just to say there is a time when the most important thing has to come first. And that's what Jesus shows us, tells us today when he breaks the Sabbath rule to heal the woman who's been plagued for 18 years with her condition. Now, one other thing I will say to you is look at the motivation. In other words, it's not a selfish motivation. Jesus does this to help her, to help the other person, just like 
the, the nurse, the physician in the hospital that bends an administrative rule uh, does that to help that patient. It's not like, wow, I'm gonna get really rich off this or something, it's doing it for another. So if the goal, the end, the purpose is to help another person, the, the, the going back to get the, the wounded soldier left behind is to help that person who's been left behind. So I'm just saying, it's not like I'm bending this rule so my, my margin of profit will go up by an additional 20%. It's like I'm helping someone else. I'm helping to advance the kingdom of God. I'm reaching beyond myself for something more, for something greater. And the something greater is God with us. The something greater is God's presence in our lives. The something greater is ultimately ministry, as we also talked about today, that God's work in the world is going to be done by imperfect people like you and me, and that we take up our ministry and follow him. And it's like, take up your cross and follow. Well, that's your ministry, whether it's teaching or leading or organizing or just a ministry of presence, the, the word you have to say to the person who lives near you, healing the person who needs help. And, and healing can take a lot of different shapes. As a, a medical director of our service said, we hope to heal everyone. We may not cure everyone, but we hope to heal. In other words, sometimes even in a case that can't be medically turned around, it is possible to help the person come to a, a healing of spirit, a healing of memory, a healing of coming to terms with what's going on in their life at that time. So just to say, whatever your time of life or condition. I mean, even if you can't get out of bed, you can pray. You can pray for others. You can pray for the world. You can pray for, for healing and hope and renewal. And so as we go forward to remember that the ministry that we share can be God at work in our world. And that that is the first priority. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was the Amen. For our sake, he was crucified through our sacrifice. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again and applauded with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism forgiveness of sins, we look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six found on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are lost. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all the world of justice, justice freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, and justice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel 
and all those who speak the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Mark, our bishop, for Rob, our priest, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in this church. In our parish intercessory prayer list, we pray for the Steele family, April, Marge, Jim, <coughs> Mabel, Betty, Walker, Beverly, Norm, Barbara, Laura, Bill, Janet, and Pam, as well as all those who suffer. We also remember those in the armed forces, both at home and abroad, and all who have suffered as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. In the Diocesan Intercessory Prayer List, we pray for St. Hubert's, Clark County, Winchester, the Reverend Duane Smith, Rector, and the Reverend Charles Elliston, Assisting Priest. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Bishop, Clergy, and Laity of the Epis Episcopal Anglican Province of Alexandria. We also pray for the birthdays of Alyssa Wright, Janet White, and Laura Friedman. We pray for the anniversaries of Judy and Bill Bramlett and Tammy and Marcus Baker. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Janet Shroud and Death, Dina Robertson, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. To put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so hold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Stand as you are. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, O Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.